What's up guys, my name is Andrew. And I'm Justin. And today we are gonna be working on the R32. Today we are gonna be installing a universal airlift controller uh, mount in the R32. We are also going to be installing a cigarette to USB um, adapter. And we're also gonna be installing a flapper wire harness in the Mark IV R32. So come along guys and join us on the journey. Okay guys, so the first step of this install, we are going to need to remove the center console here in the R32. That includes the area where the uh, cup holders are and also the front area where the shifter uh, area is too. This is the mounting plate that we are gonna be using for the airlift controller. Uh, this is a universal mount, so this can kind of go wherever you really want to put it. There's no real specific location in the R32 this is going to go. But what I kinda wanna do with this is I wanna place this up where the uh, cigarette tray and cigarette lighter is just kind of uh, get rid of those, get those out of the car, and we can put this in that area, which will be kind of nice. It will kind of hide also where the airlift controller is. You can move that uh, tray cover back and forward, that brushed aluminum trim, so it can hide the airlift controller overall. So we're gonna be placing this in that area, and to do that, we're gonna have to remove all these parts here in order to get it out of the car, and we'll make it out of the car before we reinstall it. Since we're also, like I said, we're removing those uh, cigarette lighters, we're also gonna be replacing the cigarette lighter now with a USB cigarette lighter. You can see here, it just basically has these two USB ports. Pretty nice little thing overall. Um, it'll be nice because I can plug in my phone really easy and I can also plug in my camera and then use this to power everything or charge it as I drive. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those. Instead of keeping the cigarette lighter where it currently is, we're gonna move it over to the side of the car here, of this uh, console right here just drill a hole in here and they're gonna be placed right in the side there pretty simple easy overall so guys that's kind of the first couple steps we're gonna do so without further ado let's go ahead let's rip out this center console and let's get into this install All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting in the wiring for the double uh, USB connector. So this is the connector from the old uh, the cigarette lighter. So we're gonna be taking this connector off. I already uh, metered this out. Our red wire here is our power wire that gets 12 volts. And our brown wire here and our blue wire here are both of our grounds. We're gonna use this brown and this red and then we're going to cut the blue and we're going to cap it off and it's just going to stay there as an extra ground but we don't need it for this install so we're just going to leave it there in case we ever decide to change something else up or use this wire for something else uh, so then we're going to put heat shrink on it uh, after it's all the connections are made and then we're going to uh, basically terminate the rest of it it should be a pretty easy process Okay guys, as you can see, Justin got that cigarette lighter out of the car. We put in those USB ports and they work. Charges my phone, it could charge the camera. Awesome option, I'm super happy with it. The only part of it that 
I guess is a little weird or annoying is it only works uh, with the power button that is on the actual switch. So you gotta hit the power button for it to turn on. If you leave it on, it's kind of just like phantom, uh, what'd you call it, Justin? Phantom load? It's like a phantom load, basically. Um, it could slowly drain your battery over time, probably won't drain it that much, but that is just a potential there. So you just gotta be remembering to turn that on and off if you're using that. I'm gonna just leave it off, and when I'm using it, I'll turn it on, simple as that. So that is kind of uh, what we have done with that. Justin is currently actually taking the old cigarette uh, lighter cap, and he's trying to make um, his own version of it to put over the current USB cap, so it's gonna look more OEM. We'll show you guys what that looks like when Justin's done with it. He's just kind of uh, tinkering around now, trying to get that done. But while he's doing that, I'm gonna go over here, guys, and I am going to start cutting this out because this is where the airlift controller is going to be going into. So I'm going to go ahead, take my Dremel and cut around the outside of this and get this kind of all marked up and everything like that. Should be interesting. Let's see how this goes, guys. Okay guys, so now while we're waiting for the parts to dry that we basically went ahead to make that controller for the airlift uh, management controller, I'm gonna go ahead and under the car here. Justin kind of already was under there. He found the wires that we need to do to do the flapper mod um, relay system basically that we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna show you guys what actually those uh, wires look like that you need to cut. ECS Tuning does give instructions for this wire diagram. Justin, what do you think about the instructions? They, the instructions are pretty good. Yeah, so they're pretty straightforward. Once you figure out where you are under there, I mean, it's pretty easy. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave a link down below to the actual part for this flapper. Um, I'm sure maybe some people would be interested in it. I think it's pretty cool overall that basically you can, just from a switch, open up the flap all the way open, put it back to stock or keep it completely closed. So we're gonna go ahead underneath, I'm gonna show you guys what wires you need to cut and what wires you need to splice together so then you can go ahead and do this mod if you guys want. Okay guys, so right under here, this is the dead pedal for the R32. This is the clutch right here. Underneath here, you can see these are all the fuses and everything like that underneath here. This wire right here, it is a blue, uh, it's a gray wire with a blue stripe in it. This is gonna be the wire that we need to cut into believe this is the wire that comes from the ECU that goes back to the actual flapper module that's going to operate that flap. We need to tap into this and connect basically up uh, the other part of the harness and I'll show you guys what parts of the harness you need to connect to this. All right, so now we're gonna install the harness. Uh, the black wire is gonna be your upstream wire. That's gonna be going to the ECU and to under the hood. So when you split that wire underneath, you're gonna see the wire going up under the hood and you're gonna see the wire coming back out to go towards the flapper. Uh, so your black wire is going to go your upstream and then your blue wire is going to go towards your downstream. Okay guys, so we are inside the R32 right now. Let me show you how we have all the wires set up and run in here. Basically, we now have the flapper mod is attached. It is working properly, so that is good. Just so you guys know, these wires are an absolute pain to get to. Um, me and Justin were just fiddling around with these wires, trying to get them connected. The blue, or I should say the gray wire with that little blue stripe in it is so short, and if you cut it just a little wrong, it's gonna not give you any room at all to like move around with and try to attach a wire. So it is just an absolute pain to get back up in there and attach then the, uh, what is it? I think it was the blue wire and the black wire to either sides of those uh, wires. It's on now, it's working, but like I mentioned, it's just an absolute pain to get up and in there. So we currently have the switch running over to where it should be situated. I also have the airlift controller uh, set up to where it should be going to, and I also have the final layout for where that cigarette lighter is going to go. The next step is basically now reinstalling that center console for the front 
and the rear center console also. Once those are installed, basically just plug everything in and we should be good. So let's go ahead, let's try that out, see how this goes. The last thing that we are gonna be doing, kind of something I didn't mention that we we're gonna be doing, but we are gonna be putting a new shift knob on the shifter. I got it a few months ago, haven't installed it yet. Figured since everything's out now, this is the perfect time to install it. So guys, let's go ahead, let's jump into this, let's get this install done. Okay guys, we are putting everything back into the R32. You can see here, this is now the center console with the airlift uh, management housing put in here. I already put in the cup holder, super easy to put in. Um, I did have to bend a little bit of the connectors on that USB connector in order to get it to fit properly, but it's in now. This is gonna be the next really hard thing to get in. Main reason why, not because of this part, but there's a little hole right in here that I drilled, that's gonna be where the um, exhaust flapper switch is gonna be going. So, and the bad part is there's really no wire room or wires to pull for this little switch. Man, the only thing I will recommend, ECS, please give more wire, or at least a longer wire for the blue and black wire because I really need more room in order to get this switch to where I need it to go and it is super super close um, it's gonna be really difficult for me to get this in here so let's see if I can get this in here um, I'm gonna play around with it off camera and I'll get back to you guys once it's in okay guys everything is back on the R I have the center console hooked up I actually got that switch in it was an absolute pain to get in but it's in bolted down it works um, damn I love how this looks. I'll show you guys how all this looks right here. But the last step that we need to do, of course, we gotta put in this airlift controller. So let's go ahead, let's put this in. We have to reorganize the direction that this pad is gonna be facing. Plus we have to also reorient the actual uh, screen. So let's go ahead, let's do that and let's get that going so you guys can see how to do that. Okay guys, so the first step in getting your airlift controller set up now so it can basically fit horizontally. We're gonna first update it so the screen is gonna face the right direction. You see currently it's faced in the up and down direction. We do not want this direction. The only way you can do this apparently, you have to go to the uh, Airlift Performance app. So you can see I have an app on my phone. Currently I actually opened it up luckily and I actually need to update the firmware. Once you actually update firmware for the app, that's the only way apparently you're able to change the screen. So in this case, this is gonna be the best way to change the display screen. We wanna make sure that the keypad in this term is to the right. You can see here, keypad is here. When it's going to be in here, it's going to be facing that way. So keypad needs to be on the right. So we're gonna hit keypad right. And you can see right now, it is starting the update and the airlift controller is restarting. So as this is going through that update, it's gonna take a little bit, maybe about 10 minutes or so. So once that's updated, I'll come back with you guys and give you guys a full uh, update. Okay guys, so you can see right now, the now screen is facing sideways, which is good. Also on the app, you can see here, it now says that the firmware has been updated. So we can hit that and it will now go back to the normal airlift performance screen. If you wanna know how to get to those updates, you basically just hit into here. I believe you go to operations. No, not operations. Where do you go here? About. Check for software updates. Once you hit that check for software updates, that's where you'll get into the screen basically on how to update and change your display on your screen. So now that that is done, let's exit out of the Airlift Performance app. The last part we need to do is change the orientation of this uh, pad, which is simple. All you need to do is unscrew these two in the back here, and that will rotate this. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, you could basically see here, we have the two back screws out. Now, basically, this front part should just come straight out. There we go. So that front just came out now. You can see, basically it's pretty simple. There's just three connections here in the back that go around. So it allows you to basically orient this any way you really want. So in this case, we're gonna orient it this way now. Basically, there you go. Just put it back in like that. And now you just need to screw back in the two bolts in the back and you are set. So there we go, guys. Let's pull some of this wire slack through. 
There we go. And now this should just simply like that and there we go. The airlift controller is in. That is going to be its new home. Like I said, here is the exhaust switch right here for the um, flap. Pretty easy to get to. Center is open. I believe this way is stock and then all the way to this side is closed. So it's gonna be nice. Uh, just, I have plans for the future for the R. So this is definitely something good coming forward. And then you can see guys, it just fully slides forward and closes up. That is really nice. I love that guys. So yeah, that is basically that install. The last part we need to do is get the shift uh, knob and boot back on. And I have an upgraded shift knob that we are going to be installing on here. So let's go ahead and get that also installed. Okay right, guys, so here is the OEM uh, R32 shift knob that came out of my car. You could definitely see it's seen better days. Uh, pretty worn down up here. The boot is pretty worn too, but for now I am going to reuse this boot. So to take off the knob, underneath here basically, these can come off. I've already went ahead and just taken them off, but um, in reality you're going to have to pull pretty damn hard to get this one nut here off. It will come off though. Once that's off, you can basically just remove the shift knob. Um, pretty cool fact, uh, fact, this is actual aluminum. Sometimes they look like uh, plastic that's maybe just been like a brush look, but this is actual aluminum. So, I don't know, kind of cool. Shows they didn't cheap out on making this shift knob. So now that we have the boot here out, let's see here. You can see it's in decent shape overall. Just, a, I'd say, if anything, it's just dirty. It just needs to be cleaned a little bit. There's no real rips in it or anything like that. So we're going to, like I said, reuse this. This is the shift knob that I got here. It is a weighted shift knob. Coolest part about it, I like it because it has the R logo on the top here. But um, you guys might not be able to see that. Uh, there you guys go. You can see it right there. So we're going to get this installed. Pretty simple. You just unscrew this right here. Not too hard to do. And then you basically just feed this up through here. So it comes out the top. There we go. So there you go. So now that is out of the top here. Basically now all we need to do is just take the shift knob and screw this back on. Probably the easiest install we are going to do tonight, guys. Uh, get this done. So, I'm just going to push this back down here so I can see. You can see here there's just two bolts basically that are going to tighten this down um, and get this on the car. Pretty basic. Let's go ahead. Let's get this on the R32 and let's finish up this job, guys. Okay guys, so we are gonna wrap up today's video. I just wanna give a huge shout out guys to Justin for coming over earlier today, helping me with all the electrical stuff that we needed to do for today's video. First of all, you know, setting up the uh, new cigarette to USB uh, lighter, also setting up the flapper mod, that kind of stuff was really, really uh, not in my wheelhouse. I'm, I'm not really good with electrical. Justin is a electrician, so for him, that kind of stuff is second nature for him, so I figured, couldn't ask for a better person to come over and help out with the R32. So I'm super happy with how these mods came out. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Do you guys really like how uh, now the 3P uh, management system, or I should say the controller is now located where that cigarette lighter and also ashtray used to be? I really think it's kind of like a, a hidden location that's pretty cool, a little different, and I think people are really going to find it super interesting. I also like that I put the flapper uh, mod switch in there too. I didn't think at first it would fit, so I actually went ahead and ordered another low pro, like kind of three-way switch, see if that would work. Um, obviously it's not here yet, but I kind of measured it and I was like, you know what, it's really close. Let me give it a shot, drill it in there, and it fit. So we are going to stick with the current switch that's in there now. Um, it's, like I mentioned, a pain to get in and out, so I really don't wanna have to change that anymore. 
But if you guys enjoyed this video, like always, go down below, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it, guys. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm, helps put these videos higher so more people can see these. I bet you there's a bunch of Mark IV guys, Mark V guys, maybe even some other Volkswagen guys in general who would be super interested in a mod like this. Um, more people that see it, the better. I'm here to spread and share with the Volkswagen community, so love to see what you guys uh, think about this mod in the comment section also down below. If you guys are interested in buying, say, the Flapper mod or any of these parts, they're all available on EC ECS Tuning. I will put a link uh, to ECS Tuning down below. Definitely worth checking it out. If you guys purchase any of the parts through that link, it is an affiliate link, so I get a small kickback uh, to just basically help fund the channel, help get new mods, and keep content coming out for you guys. So. On that note, guys, we're going to end tonight's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the R32. Until next time, guys, my name's Andrew. Sorry, Justin's not here, but he will be back for the next video. See you guys later. Peace out.